Right, I've been given a radio to work on. Thought I'd just do a video of it. Um, apparently, just needs conversion. It's been sitting around for a couple of years, apparently. Um, I haven't even opened this box yet. So, let's see what we're dealing with. Right. It looks pretty much like it's new, which is what I was expecting. Don't need that bit. Don't need that. Oh, look at that. All nice and shiny. Beautiful. Nice. Basically, brand new radio. A little more product placement that isn't paid. If only it was paid, it'd be nice. And standard microphone, power cable in there. Might be using those, always use my mic. I mean, it's brand new. It's going to be working. It'll work. So, no point in looking at it. Right. One nice new radio. It's always nice to work on a radio like this. Nice condition, you know. Hard bit is trying not to scratch them. We'll keep it looking nice. So, uh, ah, I'll do you bastard. God, here we go. Alright, so I'll open this thing up, I think. Oh, no, I'll power it first and see what's going on there. We've more radio over here. I'm still working on this one. This Grant 2. I'm waiting for some parts to turn up for that. Um, it's pretty screwed up. If you, ever get, if you ever see a Grant 2, my recommendation, don't buy it. Um, they're not built very well. They're built down to a cost. Sure, they work and they've got some nice features. Don't expect it to last. That's all I can say. Now, for my own experience of observations of this particular radio, I could be completely wrong, but my opinion of this is that it's not particularly good. Anyway, moving on. Maybe the same for the rest of the new series as well, the two series. Maybe the Lincoln's crap too, I don't know. But anyway, so let's get this all hooked up. We really need to get a little quick connector, but uh, I don't really do enough radio work to worry about it. It's not like I'm doing high volume radio work. Yeah, my right. transmit. Go on, swap cow center, demo up, I've gain up, my gain up, scotch down, volume down a bit, SRF, always link it on, CB on, tone high, normal channels. Get a mic. I always use my mic because I know what it's supposed to sound like. If it sounds different, then I'll notice. If it sounds not quite right with the radio. Alright, there's some channel 1 there. Which is uh, on the other radio as well. So frequency. Let's check the frequency counter on. Turn the panel to my gear first. That would certainly help. Alright. So my frequency counter is not going to be bang on because it's still got a warm up. But... Hey, transmits. It's doing three watts. Awesome. Massive three watts from the factory. Good job. Good job, Cobra. One, two. Yeah, swinging on the audio is not very great either. Um, let's flip the Marconi on and let's see what we get as far as the uh, approximate audio level. I'm not going to obviously be running off a generator, I'm just going to be doing whistles. My desk is a mess, so we got to sort this out. Um, but a bunch of parts and other stuff. Right. Go on, hurry up. Channel 40 is about 2.5 watts. And it's also a frequency by... Hmm. About 500k, the looks of it. I mean, 500 hertz. Um, yeah, about 500 hertz of frequency. Even going by the Marconi, it says the same thing. But not quite as much because it's obviously just turned on, so the oven's got a warm up. Alright, let's see what we're doing. I am modulation. Well, that says 100%. So, yeah, okay. Probably right. Modulation is probably set up correctly, but the power output's a bit low. But, um, I'll fix it. Anyway, I've got to pull this apart, do the conversion on it. Obviously, it works okay. Uh, dimmer, yeah, it's working all right. I like to have a little quick look at radio before I actually open it up, just to make sure there aren't any pre existing faults on the factory. 
I have come across them. It will be the first time I've actually found that a radio is faulty from the factory. Um, it was actually Cobra, actually, it was, it was a 29, very new 29. And it actually had solder blubs floating around on the circuit board. So when you moved it, you could hear a little rattle around and <laughs> cut the time to stop working. So, oh, that's not right. Okay. Still do RX test. Um, what do you want? Channel 1. It's the. Yes, yeah, quite a nice sensitivity there. Right. And that's not great. Um, don't see the signal meter there. But it's not registering. That's on a minus 107 dBm. I would actually expect more than that. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a noise blank off you're getting half an S point. Yeah, that's 50% mod though, let's give it a bit more mod. 30% uh, mod, let's get 50. Yeah, it does sound slightly weak. So, anyway, I'll fix all that when I do a conversion. So, I thought let's do that part, then I'll do some more video shortly. Alright, so I've just done the uh, actual conversion part, so it's now on different frequencies. And uh, now, the first thing I do is adjust the VCO. So, I've already opened this can up. What I do is I get a larger screwdriver than actually fits the slug, I stick it in there and work the wax out of the way. Um, yeah, it's important to get that out, otherwise, if you just try and just adjust the slug through the wax, you end up cracking the slug. So, you have to do that to. Get all the wax away. This is actually basically the same size as the, as the hole the thread's in, so it's a, so it um, clears it out quite well. And then this little ceramic screwdriver here I use for doing the VCO and um, get it in place. So you can see the voltage over here when I actually attach the test point, which is just here. So I'm on channel one on RX. Um, I've already tweaked it a little bit because I was moving around. Right, so 4.8 volts is as high as the VCO voltage would go. Which means on RX on channel one it isn't actually locked. So um, I'll just turn this down. So it's starting to get under control now. If we go to channel 40 on RX, that's 2.2 volts. All right. Um, TX 1.9 volts, and that is on frequency. So I tend to set that. So it's got a nice stable voltage. I mean, see how touchy that is, it's adjusting really touchily. And as you come down, it gets more and more stable. So anything above 2.5 starts to shoot up and gets a bit unstable. So I'd set about 2.3 on RX. Um, and I find that works quite well generally. All right, so TX 2.1. At least stuff you get on channel 1. And uh, channel 40 is sitting at 2.1 RX, 1.9 TX. So um, that's all looking alright. So that's the VCO part. Um, it's, very, it's always the first thing I do. The next thing I do is adjust the 10.24 megahertz. Um, but my scope going isn't going, so I need to get it going. I hope it hasn't blown up again. <laughs> I haven't much luck with the scope recently, it's getting its last legs anyway. So This uh, Grant 2 will be in a video at some point. Um, I've already recorded some footage for it, but I'm waiting for the new parts. Once I get those, I'll carry on recording some more. Uh, right, so now I've got a probe around and get the 5.12 megahertz signal which I've got to find come which pin it is so yeah, here we go, what's that pin there? All right. I might just try and pull this up so you can see a bit better hold on a second, let's move this out of the way I thought you might be able to see the radio and the scope at the same time. Yeah, right. And the figs counter is the bottom one. I've got two counters there. One's TX where you can see one's the scope frequency. 
So yeah, you should have seen it. Right. Some heads probably in the way. Right. There you go. So that's the apple from the pure oil pin. Right, 5.12 megahertz coming out. So it should be half of the 10.24 frequency. And as you can see, it's 5.1199. And as I saw, my TX frequency is a little bit out. So I just need to tweak this slightly in order to get it on frequency. It's had enough format time by now, it's been on for I don't know, probably 10 minutes. It's probably close enough. So I'll just tweak this up to get it close. The TX is really slightly high. So I might just have to look at the clarifier side of things. Has it got one? No, it hasn't got one. Sometimes you've got a. Um, oh, I forgot what it's called now. Name's gone. Name's gone. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, it's completely gone. Name's gone out of my head. Nah. Oh, unbelievable. Anyway, there's a control sometimes for the RX frequency, which adjusts it slightly. And when you've got that control, it can sometimes mean that the TXRX has a slight difference. So, what I'll do is I'll just um, scope the TX output and see what we're getting on that. Because that should be on frequency. So, it's slightly high. So, yeah, there must be a slight RX TX difference. So, I'm just going to have to try and live with that slightly, unfortunately. And the TX was low before. So, um, you can actually see here the actual TX frequency, and this is what I'm getting through my scope. And they, they pretty much agree, but you know, they're both, everything's still warming up still. So, yeah, that's close enough. Now I'll do some more alignment. Alright, so I'm just going to set the TX audio. I've got my Roden Swartz audio generator here. Set to 20 kilohertz, 30 millivolts. I'll put, they're just hooked up by flying leads to the radio. Um, you can see here, frequency display, which will be meaningless while I've got audio running, power, and this thing here will show the actual modulation. I've got two modulation meters. One's the Marconi and this Boonton one. I've got the Boonton one on right now, just because you, it all fits in the frame. You can see it then. Um, so let's just get this thing transmitting. Some little flying leads of a plug which I use to uh, as you do this. So, right, let's get this going. Right. As you can see, right now it's over modulating because I've been playing around with it. I haven't actually set it yet, it's fiddling around. Um, and you can see it's doing six watts. I miss, so let's just drop this down. Can you hear that distortion going away? So that's, I'm monitoring that on my other radio. Might be here to distortion. Anyway. So that's with 30 millivolts going in. Um, let's chop down to 20 millivolts. Could have punched the in button or what? Do that. So they're still doing 100%. So let's just go down 10 millivolts. Still doing 100%. So the modulation range is being buffered adequately. You can see the power has dropped slightly there. Um, 30. Yes, yeah, it's just probably getting a little bit warm, maybe. Yeah, slightly. Um, so yeah, that's set at least. Let's do 5 millivolts. Yeah, it's still okay. So the actual... Yeah, I've got some ground loops issues here, so if I go down too low, I actually get issues with it. So... Yeah. That's working alright. Maybe even 5 millivolts is doing 100% more. Let's find out to say 50 or something. 
This is the um, Roland Swartz super audio generator, which I repaired in another video. Um, so, anyway, that's set close enough. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the Roland Swartz that I repaired in another video, which you can actually have a look at um, on my channel if you're interested in what I did to repair that one. The um, Now, I should actually use a spectrum analyzer as well, but my, my analyzer is actually not very good. It's not very precise, um, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, this beam time actually puts out interference, which affects my, signal, my um, frequency counter, as you can see. If I plug into an Arconi, it's fine. It gets a little bit, but not nowhere near as much. Anyway. Um, It was like, yes, my special analyzer is actually very good. I'm actually trying, looking at a couple on eBay at the moment. Um, I want to upgrade and get something far more recent, well, at least slightly more recent, which has got cursors and markers and stuff like that on it, which are more meaningful. This is just not very good at all. It, um, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't show um, enough detail on it, even though it should. It's just, no, it's not very good. It's too old, I think. It's, uh, I picked it up quite cheap, I think I paid about four hundred dollars for it originally. But um I mean it does work, but it just isn't very good. Um let's transmit this thing and just uh show you what I mean. It's a bit of a side, but um let's put this back on. It's got markers and stuff on it, so it's It's not very good. I don't tend to use it much because it's not very good. I don't know what the hell's going on here. But... Turn the air filter off. I'll turn the eye filter off. There you go. Alright, so there is the unit. So if I. Oh, I think I can mute the order actually. No, I can't. I just have to pull this off. So it's a carrier, um, although it's not great. Anyway, I'll turn that off. It does have a tracking generator on it. And, yeah, it's not a great unit. It's, it obviously, you know, has a function, but I can't see much from it. Yeah, it's just not great, but I think it's just it's probably been okay in its time, but uh, yeah, right now it just doesn't really do very well. Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame. You know, um, See all day through it, but this should be much narrower. This has got a one percent, uh, one megahertz per division, right? Um, and you know, this really it should be within one megahertz. Well, that signal span is not spanning three megahertz, right? Just a carrier, it ain't not that ain't three megahertz, so um, it's really been a bit of a pain. Because I just can't actually get it to work nice. If I turn your IF filter on, that looks a bit more realistic. But um, even that isn't really looking right. Um, uh, it's just. I don't know. I don't even know what this thing is. It's an ITC, and I'm trying to find information about the actual unit. I have to do some minor repairs to it, but um, it just doesn't seem to work that well, unfortunately. Um, I mean, uh, it's just garbage, really. You can't really rely on what it says. It's just information, really, to see what's going on. It's okay for doing like the 54 megahertz. Um, where is that? Got a 
we'll pin one and three. One and three. Here we go. To you. All right. So it's okay with a 54 megahertz spike, which is over here. Um, is that one? Yeah. Hold on a minute. Let's try this version all down. It makes more sense, doesn't it? There we go. Right. There's a 54 megahertz spike over there. Um, yeah, thereabouts anyway. But which and this is actually looking behind so I might have to adjust the radio but that's all it can really tell me because this just doesn't really do what I want I'm looking for another one but they're bloody expensive things I'm actually tempted to buy a brand new one but it costs me about four grand so don't even really want to go there well, I assume before it's doing uh, I have a set to it mine's 107 dBn and that's basically at no signal level now I've done some, some realignment work and that's what we get now that's with the noise blower on and off comes up slightly so uh, slightly more sensitive than it was if I go to say minus 115 dBm so yeah that's definitely doing better it's like probably 8 dB more sensitive than it was because of the factory alignment and if I do minus 67 uh, should be S9 there you go, S9 so, awesome